Greetings and welcome to the second of two videos in which we build a finger jointed pine cabinet for a little Fender clone amplifier chassis. I discovered when test fitting the chassis into the case that I was going to have to cut a little relief here for the fuse holder and a tiny bit of relief here for the power cord grommet. These kind of modifications are a whole lot easier if you figure them out before you've finished and upholstered the cabinet. The next step is to design and construct a back door for the cabinet. And I came up with this idea here. Uh, I thought it was pretty nice. It gives a nice resonant surface uh, for the speaker and it gives us some access here to change speakers if we need to to get to the speaker jack and to remove tubes so that we can do that. Also it has an opening here to allow the tubes to vent. As with the speaker baffle, we're leaving about an eighth of an inch of space uh, on the side, which will give us about a sixteenth inch uh, when distributed to both sides so that we'll have clearance for our upholstery material. Remember, we're going to have one layer here, one layer here on both sides. So it's about four thicknesses of upholstery material. And just like the speaker baffle, or we're going to attach the back door using cleats that will be attached to the uh, inner lip of the rear of the cabinet. Now to very slightly recess the back door to compensate for the upholstery material thickness, um, I'm going to uh, use some about 1 16th inch shims, which I set down on the table, and then I'm going to set the back door down on the shims so that it's elevated off the table about a 16th of an inch. Then we set the cabinet down uh, so the back door is in position, uh, but remember it's about a sixteenth of an inch above the table surface. Now with the back door shimmed up just a little bit, we are going to glue the cleats to the walls of the cabinet. Be sure you get no glue on the back door. Don't glue the cleat to the back door. This is just a temporary to hold the cleat in the exact position so that then we can nail it. We'll let this glue set up enough to hold the cleats exactly where they need to be before we start the nailing procedure. This should take like just a couple minutes. Now that the cleats are held in place we use our trusty air compressor and pneumatic nail gun to nail them in place. Just a quick word about nail guns. For probably 50 years I used the hammer and nail technique on everything I built. And just a few months ago I went to Harbor Freight and picked up one of these guns. And I'm telling you they're the greatest thing since sliced bread. They're dirt cheap and they work great. So I'd recommend it. Okay, it's a little late for Christmas I guess, but maybe for your birthday or something. Now with the cleats uh, both glued and nailed in place, the back door has a perfect recess to compensate for the thickness of the upholstery material and room on either side for compensation. Uh, then we come up with a nice pattern for the screws to hold the back door in place and drill the holes for them. The next step involves this scary looking device which is a router table. Now some people can operate the router freehand. I've never been that lucky. Maybe on a big solid piece of furniture but on small pieces like this it's best to have the router connected to a solid object like this table. The next step is to pick out the proper router bit. Now I use ball bearing piloted tungsten carbide routers if you can get them and you want to pick the radius uh, that is about one half the thickness of the lumber you're using. Remember we use three quarter inch plywood in the perimeter cabinet so I want a three eighths inch round over bit. Now with the router unplugged uh, which is very important because I can't imagine a tool that could do you more harm uh, if you were to get your finger in it. Um, you set the router bit so that the bottom here of the blade is even with the top of the table. Now with our safety glasses on and full respect for the harm that blade can do us, we turn on the router. And 
make a sample cut to make sure that we have the blade at the right height and that it gives us a nice smooth cut with no ridges or edges. This looks good. Now with a grim realization in mind that we can completely screw this up if we're not careful and uh, completely undo all the good work that we've done so far, we're going to router the outer edges of the cabinet not the inner edges these stay the same okay we leave them alone we router the outer edges and this edge here so down here across all the way around the front and all the way around the back leaving the inner edges intact okay we're finished routing let's take a look at what we should have now if you look every one of the outer edges has a nice smooth 3 8 inch radius the corners are smooth in all directions back here all the way around should be nicely radiused you might need to do some sanding uh, to finish it off and to get rid of any little high spots if there are any but this is the way it should look also use your sandpaper to break the inner edge just a tiny bit put a very slight radius on it it makes it easier for the covering material to go around it if it's a tiny bit uh, rounded off I would also add that those of you who don't have a router don't have access to one or are scared to to use one I don't blame you and if you want to leave the corner sharp that's fine too there's a lot of amplifier cabinets I'm sure that have uh, sharp edges and sharp corners. Uh, this is the uh, fender style here and that's I guess appropriate for the little chassis that we're building this for but uh, this is the way uh, most of the older uh, amp cabinets were made. Also be sure that your box joints are completely smooth and leveled. If they're a little low you can use some wood filler if they're a little high you can sand off the high spots but they should feel when you run your finger along it just like you're running it along the uh, plank either here the piece of board that hasn't been finger jointed okay otherwise this will really show through the covering material those of you who have seen old amplifier cabinets where the wood is shrunk and all uh, you, you can see the uh, box joint along the corner well that's all quaint and nice but on the new ones uh, if, you're do if you've done your job properly that shouldn't be there Next up, we're going to router this uh, cutout for the back door, which will give it a nice finished look. We're not going to do any other part of it except for just the cutout. And since this is half inch, then we're going to use a smaller uh, router bit. We're going to go with the one quarter inch radius bit. Now, same procedure. Um, with the router unplugged, uh, you change bits, set it up where the bottom edge of it down here is even with the top of the table run a piece of scrap wood through to make sure that you have it set right and then we're going to router the back door and we can end up with a really nice radius edge here on the cutout of the back door one other thing about routers they make quite a mess so I'm lucky I have a fine loyal hound dog to help me clean it up Rusty are you going to help me clean up all this sawdust? Ah, what a good dog. Well, it looks like all our parts are finished. Um, and it's just simply a matter of assembling it to make sure everything fits up. And then uh, we can start giving some thought to uh, what type of covering we want to put on this cabinet and what type of grill cloth we want to use. Okay, here's assembly step one. We put the rubber feet on the bottom of the cabinet. Number two, we install the chassis uh, in the cabinet with uh, washers and wood screws. Step three, install the speaker on the baffle and don't tighten these screws too much. If you uh, deform the speaker basket, you can make the uh, voice coil rub. Be very careful, just tight enough to hold it snugly but not over tight. Then we polish up that old rusty uh, speaker plug I took off the 66 Princeton Reverb and wire it to the speaker. Then screw the baffle into the cabinet with uh, Phillips head screws and uh, finishing washers. 
turn it around and plug in the speaker and then we're going to attach the back door and then attach the back door with the Phillips screws and finishing washers also you'll notice that I it took away the wings that were right here I cut them off and I spliced in wood that comes down straight on either side I think it looked better um, this is an example of those mutations that take place as you're working and you can uh, make changes in your design as you go I still have the room here to reach in and plug and unplug uh, speakers into that speaker jack I can switch uh, the 4 and 8 ohm and I can reach over here and adjust the negative feedback loop resistance also up on top here I've ordered a one of those uh, kind of antique leather handles that will uh, fit up here on top and will match the upholstery material or go well with it okay nice and smooth uh, so let's uh, turn it around and take a look at the front so here's the front view with the flat black baffle in place and the speaker mounted with nuts so that the screws can't come loose and the nicely uh, routed and sanded cabinet uh, it's ready to be upholstered I can't resist playing a few chords through this just to see if it works and how it sounds I guess we'll take leave of this second of two videos uh, in which the building of the finger jointed cabinet uh, for the little fender champ uh, chassis was explained step by step I hope you enjoyed it and that it made sense and that you'll subscribe to my channel if you haven't already because Rusty's deeply offended if you don't and regardless I hope to see you again in the near future thanks so much for watching and bye for now